Before I begin this video, I would like to clarify something. After my Top 10 Series 3 Battles video, many people were shocked that I didn't mention the first World Championship Final between Razor and Beer Mop on the list. When deciding to make these list videos of the best battles and episodes of each series, I made the decision to only consider candidates from the main series and not the side events held during each series. Because of this, the first World Championship and its battles missed out of being included on my Series 3 video. I somehow forgot to mention that when I started doing this series of videos. And yes, I know I included the Internet Insurrection from the Series 2 Vengeance Battle Special on my Top 10 Series 2 Battles list, but cut me some slack here. Trying to find 10 even half decent battles from Series 2 was a struggle, so I cheated a little bit with that one. So, just to clarify, from this point onwards, the only episodes or battles to be included on any of these Top 10 lists will be from the main series only. I do plan on doing a set of videos for the battles and episodes of each series that weren't part of the main series eventually. Now, got that shit out of the way, we can move on. Series 4 was an odd time in Robot Wars history. It was sort of a halfway point between the generation that started the craze and the generation that became what we know today. Series 1 to 3 was grungy, primitive, and most of the robots of the time were clearly built in sheds. These machines were clearly made by friends and family on a small budget of a few hundred quid and many a takeaways. On the contrast, Series 5-7 to seven were brightly lit, energetic series filled with a generation of robots that are, simply put, the early evolutions of what we see fighting today. Series 4, meanwhile, was a mix of both. It still had a grungy look, but with a splash of colour that would give us an insight of what the future palette for the show would behold. The machines in this series were still those low-budget shed builds we'd seen the years prior, but they had a more polished look and you could see where the evolution was heading. Great ideas were being utilised, such as bringing in RefBot and a lowering pit, but they weren't being used to their full potential without a countdown timer and release button respectively. Opening melees were brought in to replace the head-to-head -head battles, bringing the entertainment up a notch, but Robot still only had an 80 kilo weight limit to work with. I think these facts make Series 4 one of the more unique series of the show's run, as it was a sort of odd duckling that didn't really fit into a generation either side of it. The Golden Era was the first three series, the Silver Era was the last three, and the Bronze Era was the reboot. But Series 4 just sticks out like a sore ass in either of those eras. But that's why I love it. So what if it's the odd one out? I'm proof you can be weird but good. Series 4 was from a time where many were still learning and Roboteers were happy to experiment with new ideas. Unlike previous series, however, the technology advanced enough for these new ideas to actually be useful, or, at the very least, be entertaining on camera. As far as robots are concerned, it was probably the most diverse series of the lot with almost every battle consisting of robots that were nothing alike. Back before metas were overtaking this sport, we could see different, intricate and off-the-kilter robots all giving it their worth. And this led to some amazing episodes. I'm Anson 0132 The Robot Wars Guru, and this is the top 10 episodes of Robot Wars Series 4. In my opinion, anyway. Number 10, Heat Eye. On paper, this heat isn't exactly awe-inspiring, but it sums up perfectly what I just waffled on about moments ago. There were no legends in this heat. No, Kilohertz will never be a legend of Robot Wars, no matter how much its fans cry about it, but what we got was an interesting heat with a nice mix of designs. Destructor Bubble was one of the more unique novelty robots of the time, and Splinter proved that an unorthodox weapon could be effective, using its grabbing axes to great effect. Seeing Centurion, another unique robot, lose so early was a shame, but the rest of the heat's battles made up for it. Kilohertz's opening melee was way better than it had any right to be, with all three robots getting a chance to shine and get stuck into the action. Splinter vs Kilohertz and Eric vs Smalltalk were solid heat semi-finals, and the heat final was one of the best of the series. A little one-sided, yes, but Eric didn't exactly lay down for Splinter here. Finish it off with a solid pinball run from King B3, and you've got a good heat on your hands. Number 9, Heat O. Panic Attack was a staple of the classic Robot Wars year, so it's no shocker that its heat in Series 4 was one of the best. Its opening melee with Smitty and Overkill GTI is an underappreciated gem, and I honestly feel bad for Overkill here, as it was unlucky to be put in such a stacked opening melee. Again, this heat was full of diverse robots, with no two machines being similar. Overkill's dual flippers were a cool idea that proved effective in its battle, and Sword Point was in its own stratosphere here. Okay, it was crap, but it was entertainingly crap. The only dud robot of the heat in my opinion was Oblivion 2, but it lost almost immediately so it's not too much of an issue. Seeing Smidzy wake up and dominate Agrobot in its heat semi-final was a nice surprise after its dismal loss in the series prior, and Smidzy vs Panizak was a driving masterclass, with Smidzy's aggression giving the fourth season a run for their money before Kim Davis's superior driving got the better of the black box. 
This heat was packed with good battles and interesting machines, just like it should be. Number 8. Heat J This heat has fallen under the radar with a lot of fans of the show, which is a shame because it's a hidden classic in my mind. Bigger Brother, the 14th seed and returning semi-finalist from Series 3 didn't exactly like the world on fire, I admit, after a round 2 loss to Bulldog Breed 2, but it did at least give us a memorable opening melee against Hammer and Tong and Claude Hopper. Seeing Bigger Brother topple a robot twice its weight was super stuff. Stinger's heat final clash with Bulldog Breed was an energetic heat battle that left many viewers finally seeing what Stinger's mace could really achieve. Witnessing a strong contender like Bulldog Breed get pounded into retirement like this was unseen before. On the contrary, Stinger's heat semi-final battle against Hammer and Tong was nothing to write home about, but thankfully the house roll was more than made up for it, dealing some delicious damage to the beaten machine and the floor flipper gave us one of its best flips up to that point. But the main reason this heat made it this high on the list is because of that opening melee. You know, the one between Stinger, Spikosaurus and Bulldog Breed. In one of the best battles of the series, Spikosaurus made up for its crap pinball run in Heat C by taking both its opponents to a close judge's decision in a high octane battle filled with fun and excitement. Number 7. The Grand Final Much like its Series 3 counterpart, the Series 4 Grand Final is let down by it not having a third place playoff due to a robot, in this case Hypnodis, being too damaged to compete. This sadly meant there were only three battles total in this episode, leading to the powers that be using an ungodly amount of filler to pad out the running time. It took 17 fucking minutes to get to the first battle. Thankfully, the three battles that we did get were instant classics. Pussycat's triumph over Hypnisk is to this day one of the most emotional and memorable upsets in Robot Wars history, to the point that even my own mother, who has not one single fuck to give about this sport, was heavily invested the night it aired. I still get goosebumps when Hypnotic's disc gets wrecked by Shunt and I smile ear to ear when seeing the Pussycat team celebrations. It would take a lot to trump an upset of that magnitude but thankfully Chaos 2 and Stinger were more than happy to try, and boy did they succeed. Chaos 2 up to this point had virtually been untouchable as far as the main competition was concerned, but it felt the wrath of Stinger as the Thwackbot from Lincoln gave it its toughest singles battle up to that point, taking Chaos 2 to a very close judge's decision that many people think it should have won. In comparison, the grand final battle between Chaos 2 and Pussycat felt a little one-sided, but it was still a balls-to-the-wall action-packed brawl from Activate to Cease. The grand final may have only had three battles, but they were three of the best battles this series had to offer. Number 6, Heat F When looking back at it, Heat F really is a two-robot heat, but what a pair of robots they were. Number 8 Siege Gemini, entered by the same team that entered previous two time semi finalist Mace, took ingenuity to a whole new level by being the first ever clusterbot in Robot Wars history. Tornado, meanwhile, decided that simple and to the point was a better way to do things, entering without a question the single best pusher the show had ever seen at this point. Knowing this, it's easy to see why their opening first round melee together with Caterkiller was one of the best the series had to offer, being full of twists and turns. Both machines' performances in the Heat semi-finals were incredibly one-sided, yes, but also energetic and exciting to see. Today we have many overpowered invertible boxes in robot combat, but seeing this level of power at the time was truly special. Gemini owning the creature with one of the more fun dominant wins of the series, helped out by an incredible Uta. The trials were a bit duff to say the least, but the Heat final was staggeringly good. Easily the best two robots of the heat, Tornado and Gemini fought in an incredible battle that showcased great tactical driving as Tornado singled out half of Gemini, impaling it on a wall spike to defeat the 8th seed, despite the 2 on 1 advantage. A great heat final to end a fabulous heat that I honestly underappreciated before writing this. Number 5, Heat B. In many ways, Pussycat was the MVP of Series 4. It was the epitome of a unique, zany design that was entertaining in the arena and could both cause great damage and still have great driving control. Case in point, the moment it made Riptoron shit itself all over the arena easily ranks as one of the top three KOs of the series. That kind of sums up why this heat's on this list, to be honest. Whilst the battles themselves were nothing special as far as actual fighting is concerned, the heat is full of spectacle. Razor relentlessly chewing holes in Robo Chicken and Velociraptor in its opening melee was entertaining, as was it carrying Robo Chicken around the arena. Seeing Razor and Pussycat completely decimate Millie and Bug and Robo Chicken in their respective heat semi finals was truly special. Millie's hair catching fire was a particular highlight. I think people underappreciate just how impressive Pussycat's annihilation of Robo Chicken truly was. Remember, this isn't a big scary vert or a horizontal bar spinner doing this. This is a custom cutting dish shredding the armor better than most flywheels of the time could accomplish. 
The heat final was a little anticlimactic considering how great both of us had performed to get this far, but seeing Pussycat upset the odds and tear into Razor was a good spectacle nonetheless, even with the controversy that followed it. The field of robots was incredibly diverse too, and it certainly had some of the better looking robots of Series 4. Number 4, Heat N. On the opposite end of the spectrum, Heat N didn't have what you would call a versatile, nor incredibly unique clan of robots at its helm. Sure, Millennium Bug was a fun walker, but many of the robots were lacking in shape or personality. Still, even some less than inspired designs can give the beans when they have the power and weaponry to make up for it. For example, Arnold, Arnold, Terminator and Rambot were quite generic looking robots that shouldn't have been much opposition for 6th Seed Fearmoth, but ended up going the distance in one of the closest and most hard fought battles of the series. I honestly have watched this battle many, many times and I still get blown away by how high impact and frantic it was. Speaking of Arnold A, his battle with Exterminator in the Heat Semis was way better than it had any right to be, with the uncouth lifter giving the speedy powerhouse a good run for its money. Beermoth's battle with Judge Shred was nothing special admittedly, but its heat final battle with Exterminator was the true definition of a battle of two halves. Beermoth showed why it was seeded 6th in the early stages, easily rolling the 22nd seeds over several times, but persistent driving and lifts from Exterminator guaranteed a place in the semi-finals after a fantastic tussle. Number 3, Semi-Final A yeah, I know, many people watching this were expecting this to be number one, and for good reason. It is a great episode, with some of the best battles not only of Series 4, but of the classic era of Robot Wars. But here's the catch. As awesome as these battles are, there's no truly iconic moments, and being honest, both of Chaos 2's battles are pretty lacklustre considering. Steg 2 may have got a cheeky flip in, but other than that, it was dominated in this battle, and its limp KO was very disappointing. And Tornado getting ooted in moments, whilst impressive, was nothing out of this world. Thankfully, the rest of the episode more than makes up for it. Wheelie Big Cheese vs Tornado and Firestorm vs Dominator 2 were both really good back and forth battles in which all robots competing got to show off their strengths in the arena. Seeing Wheelie Big Cheese and Firestorm actually working against a decent opponent was nice, it's just a shame they both lost after finally waking up. Thermidor vs Pussycat was a battle of two extremely close halves, with Thermidor starting strong and tossing Pussycat effortlessly into the air. But Pussycat did what it did best, using its deadly weapon and superior driving to wear Thermidor down and scrape a judge's decision. And Pussycat and Dominator 2 had a fan-fucking-tastic battle to close the episode, with Dominator 2 getting an early advantage, only for Pussycat to be the first robot to successfully puncture its infamous plasma nitride coated titanium shell, nearly pulling it off in the process. It's a great episode, but I personally don't rate it as highly as the next two on this list. Number 2, Heat G. You might be a bit shocked to see a heat containing Dreadnought, the Dark Destroyer 2 and the first corner at the Redgehog Machine manage to snatch up the runner up spot on this list, but this heat deserves it simply because it has a little bit of everything. Fans of the Trials will enjoy Bigger Brother's decent pinball run and Panic Attack taking the glory in the Sumo Basho side event, even if it was a wee bit jammy. If you're a fan of spectacle then don't worry, this heat has it in spades. Dreadnought's opening melee against Dark Destroyer 2 and Warhog may not be a great battle, but seeing Warhog shredding Dreadnought's fiberglass armour and sending both its opponents and itself flying was incredible stuff. Remember, this is a big spinner sending robots flying years before it became commonplace. Both heat semis were over pretty quickly, but the massacre dealt to both Dark Destroyer 2 and Dreadnought by the house robots was mouthwateringly beautiful. Seeing Thermidor boss this fight this easily was an insight to how awesome a robot it would truly be in the future. And if you enjoy close, even battles with some twists and unpredictability, then look no further than the first and final battles of this heat. Thermidor's melee against Chronic and Gravedigger is a forgotten classic in my opinion, as three very different yet very good robots had an aggressive, close battle that ended with an upset loss for the 13th seeds. Thermidor and Chronic would go on to face each other again in another brilliant heat final in a series full of them, where both flippers literally locked in battle. Despite being on the ropes in the early stages, Thermidor came back strongly after Chronic Slipper broke off and eventually outlasted them. Spectacle, good battles, shocks and memorable moments, this heat had it all. Before I get to number one, I would just like to mention a couple of honourable mentions. Heat H. Wheelie Big Cheese's debut heat started strong with one of the craziest and wackiest 3 melees of all time and Suicide Tendencies' heat campaign was fantastic. Seeing Kiltron get yeeted by Roger Plant's feisty fondue was great spectacle, but sadly the unfortunate nature of the heat final stopped this heat from achieving the greatness it was heading towards. Heat E. This heat had a lot of iconic moments going for it. 
For example, Dominator 2's debut, that insane two second KO it got on Henry 2, Major Tom's head exploding, Spawn of Scott's amazing pinball run, hell, what about Exterminator's incredible sumo performance? It also had an amazing heat final between 101 and Dominator 2 to boot, but unfortunately when looking back the other four battles were nothing special despite some fun moments. Also it had Shadow of Napalm's melee, which is inexcusable. Number 1, Semi-Final B. The rule of Robot Wars is that the first semi-final of a series is always better than the second. Well, this is certainly an exception of that rule. I'll start by discussing the elephant in the room and state the obvious. Hypnodisc vs Splinter is, without doubt, the most iconic battle of the entire series and maybe even in the entirety of the classic era. Hell, there isn't much from the reboot era that touches it, it was that special. Stinger vs Mousetrap was a good battle between two unique designs that was very even, until it wasn't. Panic Attack's defeat of Spawn and Scutter was pretty one-sided, but the unique nature of the KO and the post-battle shenanigans, such as Sakidalot taking a leak, were good fun. Panic Attack and Stinger had a very close tactical battle to decide who would take a place in the grand final, and Stinger just pipped it on an extremely close judge's decision. It really was a great fight between two completely different robots. But the show stealer without any doubt was Wild Thing, dealing with loyal fans two utterly amazing crunch-ups. Its fight with Exterminator was a great clash that saw Wild Thing's agility and superior driving outmatch Exterminator's speed and power. And its titanic struggle with number 2 seed's Hypnodisc is the dog's bollocks. You honestly owe it to yourself to watch this collision if you haven't. Wild Thing just came up short after taking too much damage in the fight, but not without earning everyone's respect by amounting to one of the best near comebacks in the show's history. I can certainly see why most people think Semi-Final A is the superior episode, but for me personally, the battles in this episode had a bit more bite, were a bit less predictable, and were far more iconic, making it the best episode of the series for me. And that's it for this list and this video. Do you agree with me or do you think I'm a used jizzy tissue? What were your favourite episodes of Series 4? Let me know in the comments below. I'm Anderson9132, the Rewards Guru, and I'll see you next time.